Bajin Shinso was amazing and sent me another computer. Oh crap, that's right. I was supposed to... Spike Johnny Timmy Vorthos. Um... Filthy casual is the negative term. Well, I think casual would be the non-negative term then. I think the filthy part there is what uh, denotes negative. Uh, uh, he likes playing land destruction. We're going to play Monogreen Tron Strassies against Turn 1 Glistener Elf. Karn v. Karn. I feel like Timmy would be the casual. Vorthos is the opposite of casual, and Spike is hyper competitive. Johnny's the brewer, and Timmy's more the hey, I have cards. Give me a land. Hey, look, it gave me a land. So next turn, I think we sky scanner. No, next turn we cultivate. Jund. Yeah. And then we'll play solemn. This is where they get Gigantha in hand? No, they attack. Timmy is the casual that loves Crater Hoof and Thorn Elemental. That's a Croxa. That's a forest. And I think we wheelhouse slam an Ugin and start popping off creatures. Channel points redemption. I feel like that's a punishment for me is what it is. Alright, so we take this hit, I think. Something good. Land is okay. All these crocs that... Ferox. Nullhead Ferox. Older Pro Tours back when they were called Pro Tours. Yeah. About two years ago. What is making that sound? That was weird. Ooh, two Glass of the Guild packs. If I can pull this off, it will be pretty impressive. Because I'm thinking block block. Next turn, Sky Scanner, Anguirus, blow one up.
<laughs> All right, so now we have access to eight mana from our lands. Nine if we don't block. Ferox isn't better. Yeah, Embercleave is disgusting. It does. Ugh. I don't like that. Can we survive this turn? That's exactly what it is. And I, I would like the uh, the other version of it, which is Elvish Elves. It's a fun little deck, but it's too bad that it loses, like, a lot of its pieces. Thinking we've got a little bit longer to go here. Fun fact, you timid on the card, Embercleave. Whew. Yeah, that would feel good. been so lucky for Ugin to exile them out of existence. The Tron's trust is... Banking on your order... Ooh! Those are going to be a good thing. So for everyone here, what are your thoughts on uh, Double Masters? Goose Cultivate. Let's do it. <clears throat> See, I think my take on Double Masters so far is that the set is pretty cool. The marketing, the mismanagement of information, and the lack of transparency. Like the, hey, we have these other cards that are really cool. However, um, we were wrong. You're not going to be getting things the same rarity. But the artwork is beautiful. The Tron Karn panorama is utterly stunning. Yes, I agree that the VIP packs are ridiculous. I, I won't begrudge you your opinion on that, John. I, it, I would like to hear all the voices on this. To me, the concept of the special packs isn't fine. I mean, that's one way to make sure you get the money out of it. But, like, the fact that, yeah, so uh, a VIP box is three boosters for $350. Hey, Seldatron. Oh, Got exiled.
getting Mythic Edition or Social Packs. Well, yeah, no, I wasn't expecting regular pack. I was expecting, like, previous Master sets. But, like, Double Masters, is, it's a joke of doubling the price, because that's exactly what they went and did. Except for it's... What is it, 17 times more than a regular pack? I mean, so far, it's not fully spoiled yet. And with the fact that some of the, the, uh, the box toppers that were guaranteed to be mythic or rares has... Oh, this is a historic. Okay. Yeah, see, I was also hoping for the Mythic Editions to be available in the standard set. Like, even if you make them like the previous Masterpieces, where they are just ridiculously rare but still available, that would be amazing. Well, yeah, to me, John, that's not the issue. It's not that they're going to be trash cards, it's that... They upgraded commons and uncommons in a slot that was promised to be mythic and rare only. Like, even if it's a $50 exploration map, it's still not a rare or mythic. Well, like, uh, changing the rarities of cards, that's fine, that happens. But promising specific things, like just slapping a rare or mythic placement symbol on a card because you want to, doesn't make that card a rare or mythic. I was like, what was it? Cultivate was a rare in M21 for the alternate art version. It, it's still a common. Like, even if it's a $10 common, it's still not a mythic or rare. Are we about to lose right now? Yeah. <laughs> the artwork is rare. I mean, by that logic, any of the token artwork that people make in their own is uh, the rarest artwork there is. Oh no, it's not that just they promised actual rares and mythics, it's that they literally advertised it as such. Well, yeah, the, I don't know. To me, I think asking $300 for what is arguably three bucks worth of cardboard is an issue. Like, even if I was making three grand a month again. That's still too much for plastic and card stock.
And yeah, Baby Godzilla, it's, like, it's cool, but it's not, you know, what was one of the previous box toppers? Um, Tarmogoyf. Like, just go back to doing the lottery cards. I mean, it's not even that I don't value it. Like, the cards are valuable. The sets are interesting, and they have a purpose and a place. But, I mean, like, functionally speaking, that paper is worth the same. Like, that's the same argument for, like, every other time Wizards is messed up, and they're like, oh, hey, we're gonna send you a couple of cards. We're like, okay, send me a couple of Jace the Mind Sculptors. They cost you the same as an island. Like, a foil full art Jace the Mind Sculptor costs exactly the same as a Ecoria non premium foil basic island. Could really use an Ugin right now. If they did not care about the secondary markets. Yes. Like, I get the concept of they don't recognize the secondary market, even though they're a business and they absolutely have to recognize the concept of the secondary market, because otherwise cards wouldn't have a price and every box ever would be the same. I think Big Ugin right now is about the only thing that saves us here. I don't think anything pushes them from not caring about the secondary market. It's just not acknowledging that they care about it. Oof, that is... That's rough. But I mean, do they not set the price? I mean, they still have a suggested price, even if it's not a enforced MSRP. Because the, the concept of not having an MSRP, they still set the price that they sell to a distributor at. So they still control the flow of what the cost of the product is. If they say, here's Double Masters, it's $100 a box to this distributor. The distributor then turns around to the stores and says, okay, it's $150 a box. The store turns around to the customer and says, it's $500 a box, and everyone's going to be like, go fuck yourselves. Well, considering that all of the cardstock, all of the materials, all of the packaging, all the promotional work, all of that is done as cheap as possible. Like, the fact that cards in English purchased in L England versus in the United States curve and curl at different rates, I think that says something. Like, they print them in different places for different costs and different regions. Because I think it was um, Pleasant Kenobi and the professor that did that. PK's cards didn't wilt as badly as Brian's did. <laughs> that is fixed.
but like the concept of like um, supply and demand and artificial scarcity. Any card that's worth more than fifty dollars that's not on the reserve list is because Wizards wants it to be at that cost. Otherwise, they would just print it. They would shoehorn it into an auxiliary set, and it would be available. This is a direct challenge, Darmist. I think we can only say that product is not for me so many times for so many products before it just becomes the game is not for me because they're not making the product for me. Like, everything within the set of Double Masters is for me. What's not for me is the cost. Same here, John. I haven't played Paper Magic other than with my partners or my kid in three months. I think I played with one friend once since January. I, I should be dead by now. <laughs> but like yeah again I, I can admit that from my current financial standings like if if I were to be making $500 a week I'd probably consider buying Paper Magic again like in boxes not just singles to play a specific format like if I was back to making $1000 a week I would more than likely pick up a box of this. Blue green cards a lot cheaper than that. Yeah. I'll just <laughs> give those breeding pools another year and they'll be worth a lot more money. Because dual lands, even shocks, increase in value over time, no matter the printing. That would mean that you didn't get shocklands, you got proxies. <laughs> Adrian. Yeah. I mean, there is something to be said for the physicality of touching paper cards in hand. Because to me, that's an entirely different experience than this. Like, I'm not much for flicking my cards, but... You know, sitting there and actually shuffling your deck... Come on, give me an Ugin. Totally forgot about you. You suck. Uh, so, Bailey, that's a very, very dangerous place to be. Because at that point, that's no longer a proxy. That is now a forgery. Yeah. So, um, Bailey, Watsi's official stance on cards that imitate their cards, like to the point of being indistinguishable, is that it is a crime because it, it violates their trademark and copyright materials on all of their cards. So, I would not mention that aloud. We did.
<laughs> yeah, I remember working. I, I worked at a um an LGS for a f very short period of time, and we had a guy come in and try selling off a bunch of um. I think they were uh, unlimited duels, and I just, I laughed him out the door because they were absolutely pristine, and he had like 15 in a binder, like brand new sleeves. Alright, let's see what we're going to play this time. Well, see, that's the thing, though. Like, some people understand, like, you don't find cards like that that are absolutely perfect. Some people, you know, mostly focus on the Pokemon cards, or the Yu-Gi-Oh cards, or board games, or tabletop games, and they just kind of randomly get the other stuff for their, uh, their shops. Yeah, any of the ABU lands, or basically any ABU card, unless you physically watched a person open it, don't believe them. Like, question it. I think this is the one I put at the bottom, but I'm not sure here. So, I personally don't have a problem with somebody using proxies. Anything that I would consider a forgery, I would be upset with an opponent or friend playing. Like, I would be perfectly fine with you taking a basic land and scribbling, you know, underground C on it. But if you have a fake card that is indistinguishable from a real card, that bothers me. And that bothers most people I know who play Magic. Increase rounds in the... Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Crochet is crocheting. <laughs> That's right. The 1-1 one, one is really good against turn 1 Glistener Elf's deck. decent. Alright. Oh. That's rough. Now we both sacrifice. Alright. 
this. Get this. Centaur. This really should be a human. Nebraska. I don't like the Vraska. I think we're going to get shut out here. So the whole point of this deck is to get a Pelucranos and use it repeatedly with um, the Ozolith. So every time it dies, you just pop it back and get more and more stuff. That was... what? What the fuck, Arena? So a poly right now would be pretty good, other than the fact that I don't think we can cast it. Oh, that's just cruel. Yes, they are. Almost as good as uh, Chandra and Nissa. And this deck does not have any board wipes that I remember, so we are uh, we're fucked. So the silly joke with this was um, using Animating Fairy to turn the Ozolith into a creature and just going nuts with it. The initial version I had was uh, the Ozolith as uh, an animated creature using um, Spark Double to have multiple copies. I think we've got one more game in us before the end of stream. I think I'm going to play something a little off. I thought we had them there with that uh, stone coil against all of the multicolored stuff, but the lily off the top making a sacrifice, it was pretty rough. Where are you, Jund? Did I miss Jund? There it is. So, for anyone who's not familiar, uh, the person we are currently playing with is uh, Turn 1 Glistener Elf, and he actually has a new video up as of this afternoon uh, for Artisan FNM, and the thumbnail for it is the Infinity Gauntlet Snap on a uh, beautiful, what I believe to be John Avon Plains artwork.
You always bolt the turn one glistener elf. Yes. Or in my case, you gut shot it. Uh, yeah, we'll keep this. It's not the best, but we have the double black that we need, and all we have to do is draw red, which we can do. Standard, but also another format. So, Pioneer. I feel like that's what that means. Standard, but another format. So with my affinity basically being banned out of modern, I uh, kind of shifted over to the storm format, and um, yeah, storm good, storm's good. I mean, Affinity's not bad, but losing Mox Opals makes it significantly less good. Well, hello there, Turn 1 Glistener Elf. I don't know if you heard me pumping your uh, new video there that has the Thanos Infinity snap. I mean, that is a John Avon Plains, if I'm not mistaken, correct? That's just interesting. <laughs> Favorite planes. It is, okay. I want to say that was one of the Theros planes. Oh, you dick. So now I need to top deck a land. That is not a land. This is where we get land destruction out of the game. <laughs> no rares. That's that's fair. These are all sorcery speed. Yes. Okay. Go get a swamp. Oh, come on, deck. One more land. We just needed one more land, and we could have done stuff. I, I don't think I'm going to find the land. <laughs> I think that we are very quickly here going to be dead. Bye-bye. Uh. This deck has a curve of fucking three. It's literally one, two, three. Done. I have thrown away two Fable Passages. <laughs> hey, Karn the Aardvark, raiding with a party of five. How are all of you? 
How is Karn? You were playing Magic the Gathering. Perfect KO. Yes, I have zero lands and permanents. Aardvark, your face. <laughs> Get in the fields of streaming again? I completely understand that. Well, since we just got raided, I think I'm going to play another game. Uh, Glistener Elf, the games have been fun, but I'm going to go try and win a game since I lost, I think, every single game against you. Ha <laughs> ha.